Today we're going to be taking a look at what our novelty vending business actually makes behind the scenes. And I know that this is a topic that can be a little bit controversial. Um, there's a lot of vending YouTubers, both big and small, out there that don't like touching on this subject. That being said, one of the biggest things that we really try to offer here on our channel is transparency. You know, a lot of the people showing what they're making online, not that I have any issue with people showing like the cash and all, every other aspect of the business, that's awesome. But a lot of those people similarly don't like to talk about the behind the scenes and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Obviously it comes down to personal preference but I do think that it's a bit of information that should be out there for people that are just starting to look into getting into this so that they can get a realistic representation of what they can expect to be making in their first year. Now getting into any business venture can be really scary especially if you don't have any experience operating a business prior to doing so. And vending is no different. I will say I think it's a lot more accessible than really any business venture that I've looked into, but it doesn't come without its own costs. We just finished up November, we're rolling into December right now, and we're off to a really strong start in December. Like, I think December is going to be our tipping point. Obviously, we'll know within the next couple months, but I wanted to go over what our business started at in July 2023, how many locations we had, how many machines we had out, and what we were actually making at the time versus what we're making now and some of those big changes that kind of brought us to this point. To start off, how many machines and locations do we currently have in operation? So back in July of 2023, we actually only had three locations and we have five machines across those three locations. We had two Dairy Queen franchises and one little tiny Mexican restaurant. We had a gumball machine in there. Um, we've since upgraded it to a toy machine. Um, and then we had two machines in each of the... Uh, each of the Dairy Queens. We had two bull cracks in one Dairy Queen and a bull crack in our first claw in the other Dairy Queen. Now, the really important thing to mention here in the beginning is in July of 2023, we had just placed that first claw towards the tail end, so that didn't really reflect in our income for July of 2023 um, because it had just been placed. But I will say that, you know, that was a really big turning point for us was getting those electronic machines. Now, in November of 2023, five months later, we have nine machines across seven locations. We focused more on locations than, than the machines, and the machines kind of just came with the acquiring more locations. We have three more machines on the way from Rainy over on Alibaba and then we have <laughs> more machines than I would like to count sitting in storage waiting to be refurbished and by storage I mean my parents basement. Dad mom if you're watching this I'm sorry to <laughs> still be storing machines there at some point I will deal with them. Um, one at a time. <laughs> so yeah, we have extra machines in storage. We have three more machines on the way and we've definitely um, increased the number of locations and the number of machines we have out actually operating. So it's been super exciting. Lots of growth for five months. Maybe not as much as some people, but we're really happy with it. So an overall look for the last five months at our income and our costs. So there's a few little things to note here. But before we get into that, our gross sales for this five month period were $5,249.89. That's down to the dollar. Now, the one thing to take into consideration here, this isn't taking into consideration any of our credit card sales. I think we've made an additional like four to $600 in credit card sales um, that are not pictured here. And it says here <laughs> that our price costs were $1,700. Now, Smart Claw, we have had to take an average of all of our prizes in order to calculate the costs of operating those bulk machines. So this number is significantly higher than what we've actually spent on prizes in the last five months. I wanna say realistically speaking for bulk machines, we may have spent like 500 collectively on prizes. And then obviously you have, you know, the prizes for the claw machines. Those again, maybe another 500 and we didn't even start rolling those out until December. So I'm not really counting those. I'd say our overall prize cost was probably closer to a thousand for this time frame. Next up we have commission. And another note about commission. We actually were not paying commission to any of our locations for the better part of those five months. As we started adding on locations, we started offering a 20% commission to the employee tip jar, and that really helped us secure more locations. But for the better portion of those five months, we weren't paying a commission. Um, the locations that we used to not have to pay a commission to, we chose to pay a 20% to the employee tip jar. It's really helped to establish the relationship that we have with those employees a little bit more, and it has helped to just have some extra eyes on our machines. Obviously, if you have more, more employees looking in on it, you're not probably going to have so much of an issue with theft and um, people breaking into your machines. You just have more eyes looking out for you. So it's something nice that we try to do for the employees that helps um, 
encourage them to keep an eye out on our machines just because they know we come in and we put a little something extra in the tip jar. So the number you see here for commission, again, is a lot lower. We do 20% across the board now. I went ahead and just calculated the amount of commission that we would have paid with that 20% over the last five months, and this is what it would have come out to. That being said, we didn't actually pay that. This is just like a rough estimate of what would have been paid with a 20% commission throughout that entire time because I really didn't want to go back and try to figure out which one we were paying commission to at what exact time at every single you know, location. July. July is when uh, we very first rolled out our first claw machine. We only got the tail end of the income from that for a month. Um, so for the most part, we were only operating four bulk machines at this time. We didn't have any electronic machines until the very tail end of the month. You can see at this point, our gross sales were nearing $700, but they were still really, really low. That being said, <laughs> remember when we placed the first bulk machine we had at the Dairy Queen franchise that we worked at and we bulked $40 for the month and we were really, really happy about that. So the fact that we were making $650 a month at this time, I mean, that felt like, like a huge change for us because obviously we started from, you know, basically nothing and we turned it into this so even though it was it looks really small now i mean if we pulled 600 dollars a month now i'd be like wow what's going on something's wrong <laughs> um but at the time we were super excited this was like the biggest pull we'd had at that point and we were super 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 excited about it next up we get into august <laughs> and august obviously there's a huge difference between the two of those things we basically doubled our income between july and august by adding three electronic machines so at this point we added two miniature claw machines and one magic cut machine in august we made almost fourteen hundred dollars off of our business so can you imagine going from forty dollars to fourteen hundred dollars obviously we were stoked we were super happy about it and this is when we realized you know i think we want to start taking the steps to get out of bulk now between august and november we pretty much ran the same machines so we're going to go ahead and get into what the next few months look like um but i think seeing how big of a difference just a few electronic machines made in our month-to-month -month income is what really encouraged us to to start pursuing electronic machines more than the bulk machines we did purchase a few more bulk machines after this point but it didn't take long for us to realize like no we we just weren't interested in them anymore next up we have september um there were quite a few things that impacted the sales for september the big one being that school started and because we are a novelty vending business most of our audience obviously is children we cater to children and when children go back to school our sales decline so that had a huge impact on our sales being said we also just started rolling out our electronic machines and the novelty of them had worn off quite a bit um, and the reason why is because in the beginning we basically stacked stacked our claws with capsules and our magic cut was a dollar to play and there's just a, a, a lot of little things that we hadn't learned needed to change yet we needed to get more interesting product we needed to drop the play cost for the magic cut there's just a lot of things that needed to be changed that we hadn't quite had the time to learn yet so september definitely took a hit a lot of that came down to the fact that school started and the fact that we had a lot to learn about those electronic machines that had very quickly worn off when it came to novelty <laughs> october um our place started to go up a little bit we started adding like pokemon cards and some other things to the claw machines and that definitely helped um we also added a tablet to the prize locker of our claw machines because originally it was an elite trainer box from pokemon but very few people will actually know what that is unless they're a collector so um it, it just wasn't a prize that appealed to all audiences our switching it to a tablet definitely did impact our sales in a very positive way um, and this is around the time that we started really considering ordering from Alibaba for better claw prizes and the reason why is because we wanted something branded we wanted something that really drew in an audience and um, encouraged people to play so we definitely started thinking about that more and in the meantime while we were trying to figure out the Alibaba ordering process we started to seek out more branded items on our own here in the US. So this included mini brands, Pokemon packs, little mini Tum Tum stuffies. So there's lots of little things that we added like that. Obviously our um, profit margin on those items was not as good as it was or is now by ordering through Alibaba, but it gave us an opportunity to kind of test the waters with what products would do best. Um, and we're seeing a, a great reflection of what we learned now that we're um, using prizes that we have ordered from Alibaba, ones that appeal to a broader audience and are a little bit more interesting than the two inch capsules we were throwing in the claws when we first started. So the last few months especially have been really heavy on learning how to make those claws more profitable. 
by the end of October, we actually did place our first Alibaba order. We thought about it for a month, tried to figure out the, the ropes, and we did place it by the end of the month. We ordered three claw machines and a ton of prizes. We've already made lots of videos on the prizes we ordered, so you guys can go check those out. Um, but Alibaba really is, I think, going to be a huge turning point for our business when it comes to profit margins and also just the variety of prizes we can offer. Getting into November. Now, November arguably is like one of the best months we've had in the entire time running the business. And the reason why isn't because it is more than we made in August, because it's not. It's very close, but not more. Um, the reason why is because it's like basically winter where we're at. So being able to see that we're still making like in the thousands in the winter is just a huge step for us. We went from $40 to $1,340. And that's just a huge difference. We're very, ha very, very, like, unspeakably happy with where we're at now. Obviously, there was a little bit of an increase from October to November. We started adding some Alibaba products. Those have done really well in their first two weeks, and that has had a huge impact on how much people are playing our machines. We dropped the play cost for our Magic Cut Mini to 50 cents instead of a dollar. We added instructions to it. If you've been on the channel for a while now, you've seen us do all of these things and they have had a huge impact on our actual plays from our machines. So we were really happy to see that, you know, with a little bit of experimentation, we were able to do the same thing with those uh, claw machines and electronic machines that we were with our bulk. And we were able to see that reflected in the amount of profit that we were making. The biggest change from November to December, because it happened right around that time, was that we took one of the claw machines from a Dairy Queen franchise, the second Dairy Queen franchise we got into, and we moved it. And I think for a long time we were clinging to the fact that we were in that franchise, and we do still have some bulk machines there because those tend to do okay. Um, but we really wanted to keep the claw machine there, not because it was making money, but because it was a franchise. Obviously, um, that did not work out. The franchise was not getting enough foot traffic because of the area it was in to really warrant keeping the claw there. I think the best way I can explain this to you guys to give you an idea of why we needed to move it, the week before we moved it, it made $8. All week, $8. Definitely was not making what it needed to be for the fact that it was such an expensive machine. The first week we moved it to the new location, it made $450 that was with a downed Nyax reader, which is our credit card reader, and a jammed bill acceptor. So we were very, very happy with what it did in its first week. So that being said, that one move has made a huge difference in our profit. We are only a week into December, and we've already made almost $700, which is, you know, just about a pole and a half for us on a regular basis. So when you first get into any location that's going to have that initial, like, oomph of traction while people are getting excited about it and employees are playing it, and I will say we have never had a machine do this well. And that gives me a lot of hope for this location continuing to do well in the future. It does a lot to exemplify the fact that you should not be afraid to move a machine if you have to. If a place isn't making enough, drop it or move it. If something's not doing well, it is in your best interest as a business owner to move it to a location where it is going to be doing better. So there's a few things to remember as we close this up. Um, obviously, things have changed a lot since July. We went from making about $652 to, I mean, that much in a week. I am still shocked at that. Um, and I think it's going to take some time to digest, but we've, we've done quite a bit of growing in the last uh five months and I think that is what made me really want to sit down and just kind of show you guys what has happened over the last few months behind the scenes so you get an idea of what realistic growth looks like like okay so a few things to remember while my dog intrudes this did not happen overnight obviously this is five months of growth but this does not take into consideration the year of just basic learning that happened before that. We, after a year, we're only making $600 a month. Obviously that process is becoming a lot more expedited now that we are able to invest more in with what the business is making. This offers a very realistic representation of what you can expect if you're willing to take it seriously in small steps over a long period of time. The next thing I wanna go ahead and point out is the fact that even though we are seeing much higher profits at this point in our business you know, timeline, all of our profits are going right into continuing to grow the business. Almost none of this is ending up in our actual pocket at the end of the day. Maybe once in a while we'll get lunch while we're actually like out doing vending, but for the most part, most of our money that's coming from vending is going straight back into growing the vending. Last thing I wanted to go ahead and address is the fact that our prize costs are going to be going down significantly this year at the same time that our profit margins are going to be going up. And the reason why I say that is because 
Right now for bulk, we're spending between 20 and 50 cents an item for a capsule. We're planning to get out of bulk and we can spend that same, same amount on an item for our claw machines that will make $5 on versus $8 on. So our profit margins are going to continue to grow as we continue to edge more into the claw machine territory. We definitely want to get away from the bulk. I think it took us a really long time to understand why there's bigger vendors that don't want to touch bulk. But as we grew in bulk, we realized it's not long-term sustainable. The profit margins are not good. The time that you have to spend emptying those machines is not good. Um, we've had more issues with our bulk machines than we've had with our claw machines, which is just so incredibly weird to me. They're easy to fix, don't get me wrong, but you do have to dedicate some time to doing it. Um, and even though we have a soft spot for bulk, because that's where we started, claw machines long term, with the scale that we want to grow this to, are going to be the most long term sustainable. If you guys are interested in seeing something like this again, I'm hoping to sit down and kind of do a little bit of an audit of what our behind the scenes looks like for, you know, every three to six month period or however long it takes for us to make a huge difference in our income. I feel like a lot of people are hesitant to show people what they're making in the vending business. I don't believe in that. I don't think that you succeed in life when you yourself become successful. I think you succeed in life when you teach others around you how to become successful too. Um, and I think a lot of the time people overlook that. So this is what we did over the last few months. This is um, how it's impacted our sales. And this is what we're actually making from our novelty vending machine business. So from our novelty vending machine business, that was supposed to be a little more dramatic. So if you guys enjoy this video and you want to see more content like this in the future, or you want to see how we operate our business behind the scenes, um, go ahead and check out the rest of our channel, subscribe for more, and let us know what you want to know about running your own vending machine business down in the comments below. There's